Welcome back to the channel, everybody. It's TK421, and I'm your Nebulous Commander. Uh, I appreciate you guys for coming back. Uh, we're about to get into part two of our quick start guide for Star Citizen. Uh, this one's going to be on uh, the ship packages and game packages that are currently available. The ones I recommend, uh, might not recommend as much, what some are good for, what others might be better for. Uh, it's gonna, We're going to cover the eight ships that are currently available for the free fly because this is the whole reason for for the quick start guide is you don't even need to buy a game package right now from September 8th through the 15th of 2022 they're running a free fly event and you can just get into the verse and test the eight most popular ships available uh, amongst citizens at the time for free uh, so stick around stay tuned uh, hear what we got to say and let us know what you think down in the comments below don't forget to subscribe to the channel and we appreciate you for stopping by let's go ahead and get into this video guys hey everybody and thanks again for stopping by the channel we're about to go in here and look at the starter packages that are currently available we've got a couple that are on sale for the free fly event going on for iae coming up and the ship showdown that was taking place from september 8th through the 15th of 2022 for anyone who's watching later on. We're going to go through all the starter packages. These have been pretty consistent for the last mm, at least nine months or so that I've been playing the game, so don't expect much change. So if anyone's watching later on after the event, a lot of this information should still be relevant to you. But later on, we are going to get into some stuff that won't be. I'll try to be clear about what is and what is not. Getting into the packages, first off, stuff that will not be relevant to people after the event are these two that are on sale. We'll go ahead and go through these first real quick, uh, and then we'll get into all the packages just to go through them, and these will be listed again under their normal prices there for anybody who's looking. In addition to the discounted price, 10% off for your Mustang Alpha here, as well as 15 off for the Aero, you're also going to receive increased 24-month insurance on both of these ships. That can be very important later on at the launch of the game. As of right now, it doesn't really have any effect because all ships have infinite insurance as it is, so it's not something you really need to concern yourself with too much. But the discount, as well as the increased insurance, does kind of change my recommendation. The Mustang Alpha is always available for about $45, as well as another ship known as the Aurora MR. I normally would recommend picking up the Aurora MR under normal circumstances if you're just getting started in the verse, just to not waste any money. In case you don't like it, in case your system doesn't run it, in case you've got any kind of issues and you just hate it, hey, you're only out 45 bucks. probably not the end of the world or you probably didn't spend it to begin with, you know? But being 10% off and with the increased insurance, reason I normally would recommend the Aurora over the Mustang is the Aurora's everything you ever need. It's got a ship, but it's got a bed on board the ship as well, which allows not much extra gameplay, but some extra gameplay at the moment uh, when it's not broken, but potentially a significant amount of gameplay for you later on that you won't have available to you with the Mustang Alpha. It's not really all that important. You can save about about a hundred grand or two hundred grand uh, to buy an Aurora or a Mustang Alpha in game in absolutely no time just running a couple of missions so this is by no means make or break decision here but typically that bed adds the value that uh, i just don't see as much of in the mustang but you can always pledge more money towards your current pledge and we can do a video about that later on in the series uh to show you how just look up ccu chaining or um cross chassis upgrades for star citizen and somebody's already got a great video i'm sure if you want to just spend the least amount of money as possible which is what i recommend to get into the verse dip your toes in see if you like it this forty dollars and fifty cents is the best way uh that there is to do it as long as you're watching this video um during between september 8th and september 15th of 2022 However, if you are already into space sims or flight sims and you already know that you're getting into this game specifically because you want to do badass space combat, you want to be Han Solo, you want to be Luke Skywalker, you want to be Starbuck, 
it may very well be worth it for you to dish out the extra money and go ahead and pick up the war or the arrow. A lot of the best pilots in the verse, has, the arrow is their favorite ship. They fly it all the time. There's a guy called Avenger One. Uh, a lot of his videos have helped me learn a lot about the flight systems and combat, uh, space combat in Star Citizen, and this is his favorite ship. It's super maneuverable, has the best acceleration out of any light fighter in the game. It's pretty great. Pretty great. Uh, something to seriously consider. If you know that you're, but only if you know that you're getting into the game mostly for the combat, because that's about all you're going to be able to do. You can't store any boxes, so you can't do any box delivery missions. You can't do any um, cargo running. You can't do anything like that. It's uh, basically going to be pure combat and a shuttle, and not a very good shuttle at that either, because you don't have super great range. All right, so let's get into the pledge store. Now that we're past the ones that are for sale, we'll go ahead and get into the pledge store and we're gonna go through all of the available uh, packages. Did it take a strike to game packages? It did, that's great, excellent. So, first off, we have the two we just talked about. We don't need to go back over those, I don't think. I think you guys get the idea. You'll see this box here, now that we're in here, right beside where it has the discount listed, where it says War Bond. What War Bond means is that you have to spend uh, new money. You can't use store credit. If you have store credit built up, you can't use that to buy a War Bond sale. You have to use new money only. Uh, that shouldn't be too relevant for people watching this video, because you're probably pledging for your first ship. Now here's the Aurora MR starter pack that I was talking about. Always $45, just like the Mustang Alpha is usually $45 without its 10% off like it has at the moment. Uh, this is actually the starter ship we're going to be using for this series because I uh, kind of forgot that we had uh, Free Fly coming up and purchased this a uh, couple or a little over a month ago before they it was announced and I remembered. So stupid me. Um, missed out on getting a little bit of a discount there, but doesn't mean y'all can't get it. And the gameplay is not too different between the two. I don't think I'll be using the bed logging feature, so really kind of same situation for everybody. As I said, uh, typically under normal circumstances, for people who are not seeing this discount here, and you only have the Mustang and the Aurora both at $45 instead of having the Mustang available at $40, uh, I personally would recommend the Aurora MR. Uh, if you've seen some older videos, they may have said something about uh, the Mustang Alpha not being able to do box missions. That's no longer true. They did implement the box storage uh, underneath the craft in the back, so you can do your box missions in the Mustang Alpha now. Um, but there is no bed. There's still no bed. There's not going to be a bed. There have no plans for a bed. You have slightly better weaponry, significantly better maneuverability, and you've got a much smaller profile, which will make it a lot harder for you to be hit in combat. So you're, I want to say significantly better in combat, but realistically in the real world, it doesn't work out that way. I find myself to be just as effective. Once again, I'm not a great pilot. I find myself to be just about as effective in an Aurora as I am in a Mustang. Not a whole lot of difference there for me. Uh, I just <clears throat> like having access to that bed if I'm doing something that makes it relevant. Moving on. Uh, the next available ship, you'll see, uh, a lot of times you'll see uh, another copy of a uh, starter pack we've already talked about, but it says and Squadron 42 combo underneath it. That just means that for an additional $20, you can also get Squadron 42, which is the single-player version of Star Citizen that uh, is probably maybe going to be released one day. And uh, for an additional, tw you can get it for an additional $20 um, as a pre-order bonus, essentially. Uh, 
if you want to go ahead and get it, that's great. I do have access to Squadron 42. It's one of the things I'm most excited about within the Star Citizen universe. But that's just something you'll have to decide for yourself. I'm not going to go over it because it doesn't change what you get in the Persistent universe. Uh, it only adds that access to Squadron 42 upon launch. And uh, I think beta access, supposedly. But we'll see. <clears throat> so, going back. Uh, the Avenger Titan is it's seventy dollars. That's about the price of an actual game. If you uh, like a, the price of a new game is about seventy bucks. If you are not against spending seventy bucks, you're gonna have the best time getting started in this ship here. Uh, especially because I think don't quote me on this and don't be upset if I'm wrong, but I think you can fit that hover quad that we're going to get that you and I, because you're going to use me as your referral bonus or <laughs> you're going to use me as your referral, uh, that we are going to get for free that you, I'm pretty sure you can actually fit it in the back of this ship. So you'd be able to carry it around, but not only that, but you have nine SEU of cargo significantly more than anything below it or on even around it, uh, in price really. Uh, at $70. Um, you've got a size 4 and two size 3 cannons, whereas you're only dealing with size 2s on anything below it. Uh, you've got access to more missiles. You're more maneuverable and faster than things below it. Once again, not including the arrow, which it's not below it anyway. It's still at 76.50 here. It's normally higher than that. You'll see here in a moment. Uh, let's see it's you know really there's, there's a bed it's got a bed just like the aurora it's got more storage space better for really it's just a better all-around ship than anything else that you're going to get anywhere near its price or uh below it So we've got a couple of the Squadron 42 packs. There's the Mustang Alpha at the normal price. It'll also only have six month insurance, just like the rest of these. No reason for you to pick it up if you're, once again, if you're watching this video at the time of uh, the event going, September 8th through 15th, 2022. Not a, really any reason to get it. But at another time, if you would like to get this instead of the slightly better combat ship, Instead of the bed, it's not a bad decision outside of the event uh, either. I just personally prefer having access to that bed on the MR. But if it's something that you'd rather have is uh, better combat performance, but access to the rest of the same gameplay other than the bed, by all means, get this one. You'll, you won't hate it either. Okay, so moving on, we've got... The Anvil Arrow, we've already gone over what it's great for. One of the best combat ships in, the, ships in the game. Everybody loves it. It's super awesome. I love to fly it. It puts out a lot of DPS. If you're into flying space fighters, or if you're into flying fighter jets, uh, and you know that's what you were getting into this game for, it's not a terrible buy, even at 90, but I'd probably just stick with the Avenger if it was me. Uh, access to a lot more varied gameplay. A lot of people really like the Anvil C8X Pisces. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the ship. It does great in its design role as a snubcraft for the Carrick, but other than that, I don't see any good reason to use it. A lot of people recommend it and say it's the best starter pack and this and that. Um, I just don't really see how, when for an additional $10, you could get the Avenger. It's got about the same amount of SCU on each, but this only has two size 2 weapons. It's worse than an Aurora or a uh, Mustang Alpha is for combat. It's significantly larger than those two ships, so it's easier to hit. It's slower and less maneuverable than those two, sh two ships. Now, you can carry three friends in it. No, excuse me, two friends. So you and two friends can all ride in this ship at the same time. Your friends don't have anything to do, but you can all shuttle around together. So if you're running bunker missions with some buddies or whatever, you know, it's not a terrible ship to have. I like the Pisces. I just don't think it's a great 
starter ship. I don't think there are a lot of people that are going to thoroughly enjoy flying it for any reason. Uh, early on in the game, especially not if it's all they have. Moving on to the 100i. This was actually my starter package. Uh, this is what I started the game flying uh, back in January. It was on sale uh, at the time. I wouldn't have purchased it at $65 uh, after doing the research and knowing what I did about it. But on the time at the time, it was on sale for $45. The same, I think it was $45.50 maybe. Either way, it was essentially the same price as the normal starter packages. Whereas this one comes with two size three weapons rather than the three or four size twos. Uh, it's got the same amount of missiles as the Mustang Alpha. It's got similar flight characteristics. Um, it had a working, it already had its working SCU box, so you could do your box missions in it. And it has a bed. Um, this is a great starter package. I thoroughly enjoyed the game starting with it. I love it. I, actually, I don't have it any longer. Uh, but I do have a 125A that I pledged for. Uh, which is the military version of this same ship. That's how much I liked it. I went ahead and bought another one. So much utility to it. It's so small you can spawn it at via like ground vehicle landing pads, which is uncommon amongst most ships. There's only a few handful of them in the game that can be spawned like that. And um, the 100 series is one of them. A lot of utility there, and uh, great to see it. Moving on, we've got the Nomad, the Nomad Starter Pack at $95. Uh, this was the first thing that I moved up to from my 100i. The it was also on sale at the time. Uh, so before that sale ended, uh, I cross-chassis upgraded to the Nomad here. And the Nomad is super cool. It's like a space uh, pickup truck. It's got like 26 SEU of storage on it, which is just way more than anything below it uh, on the starter packages especially um and doesn't carry it internally like most ships do the reason i say it's a pickup truck is because it's got like a flatbed on the back and that's how it carries all of its scu um it's also the first ship that you can pledge the cheapest ship you can pledge that can carry uh, a rock mining vehicle a mi lining mining land vehicle uh which is Mining is kind of, it's either, it's always in the top five best ways to make money in this, in the Star Citizen universe. So having a Nomad, uh, aside from the fact that you've got four size three weapons, you've got three size one shields, you've got significantly more hole plating than in anything earlier on. Yeah, it's kind of big. Sure, it's a, it's a little sluggish to accelerate, but it's actually got really great maneuverability acceleration, like in y'all, uh, pitch and roll for something of its size and shape. And uh, just super unique. If you played um, Elite Dangerous, you probably recognize it because it is definitely based on the most popular ship from, or one of the most popular ships from that game, the uh, Asp Explorer. Um, David Brayburn and uh, Chris Roberts are actually good friends and they collaborated <laughs> in designing this ship so it's pretty cool moving on from there we've got my current pledge ship one of if not my favorite ships in the verse this is the Cutlass Black everybody this is uh, the quintessential Star Citizen pirate ship. Um, that's kind of what Drake, the manufacturer of the ship, is known for, is making cheap, accessible weapons for ever for everybody. And in this case, when I say weapons, I mean spaceships. Uh, but it looks like Serenity. You can fit 46 SCU instead of just the 26 out of the um, uh, Nomad. You can still get your f four size three weapons on it. You've got a medium shield instead of the three smalls, which is slightly better. Uh, you've got cargo access on both sides of the ship. Uh, a cargo ramp on the back to easily pull vehicles into it. 
uh, actually enclosed cargo. You can carry two rocks. You've got a turret. On, so actually, yeah, it's six size three weapons because you've got a turret up top with two size three weapons that a buddy can uh, work for you if you'd like, as well as a co-pilot seat. So you can once again carry two buddies with you. Uh, and you can have two rocks. So you could set up a little mining operation where you and two buddies, you fly them around and drop them off with their buggies at the rocks that they're going to mine and then pick them and then fly the next guy onto a place go back to the first guy and pick him up when he's done and then y'all go pick up the next guy and clear cut a planet significantly f faster like that uh lots of options there it's just an awesome ship you can i'm done all the way up to ERTs, the hardest bounties in the game, which are hammerheads, just giant ships. Uh, I've blown up at the Cutlass Black. You can dip your toes in, you can do everything this game has to offer, basically, in this ship. So, I love it. Highly recommended. But not when you're just getting started. Since you've got cross-chassis upgrades, there's really no good reason, unless it's on a deep sail. Uh... No reason to spend that much money starting out. But if you decide that you, you know, would rather start off every update with a uh, little advantage, this would definitely be the way I would go. The Hornet F7C is a medium fighter, medium single seat fighter. It's super badass. It's extremely fast. At one point in time, it was the fastest ship in the game in a straight line. Uh, it's not anymore, not by far, actually, but, uh, it's still super fast, very maneuverable, puts out a lot of damage, super effective, I would never pay $125 for it, uh, personally. A lot of people love the ship, um, it's pretty accessible in-game, though, and $125 just seems extremely steep for what you're getting, uh... I've seen so many people blow these up in arrows, and you could pick one of those up for $78 or $76.25 right now. Definitely go that way, and if it's not currently available, then it's at $76, then it is still available at $90 all the time. For me, it's a better ship. I'd go with that if you really wanted to go this route. Uh, after that... We've got the Misk Freelancer. Uh, the Freelancer is kind of cool. Uh, it's kind of a competitor to the Cutlass Black. It's uh, you know one of the other cheapest multi-crew ships you can get, especially as a starter package, as you can see. Um, but you don't have a whole lot of DPS as a solo pilot. That's one of the best things about the Cuddy is you can do everything the game has to offer because you could multi-crew. But you don't really lose much if you want to take it out solo, you know. Um, with the Freelancer, unless you're going to be playing with buddies almost all the time, I just can't really recommend it. Like, almost all the DPS, you've got like two or three turrets on it, and that's like basically where all the DPS comes from. Very little coming from the pilots. Uh, and also, if you were going to get a Freelancer, there's just way better variants of it and yeah you could just cross chassis upgrade to them but at the same time i just personally don't think this is a great place to start out at and then we get into the pricey boys the constellation andromeda starter pack the constellation andromeda is one of my favorite ships in the game it's essentially cutlass black 2.0 it's just it's his big brother instead of having um, a capacity of 46 SCU, you've got 96 SCU. Instead of having uh, access to 24 size 2 missiles, you've got 58 size 1 and size 2 missiles. Instead of having um, uh, one size 2 shield, you've got one size 3 shield. And about twice as big as a Cutlass Black, you know. Um, it's got size 
4 and size 5 weapons instead of the size 3 weapons. You have two turrets instead of one. It's the first large ship you gain access to really in the game. I have one in game. I haven't pledged for it. Uh but I do have one in game. It's beautiful. I love it. It's so great. Uh you can just melt ERTs, those hammerheads I was talking about earlier. Uh, if you can get in a good orbit around them, you can just destroy them in seconds, and it's just beautiful. It's one of the most... Puts out some of the most DPS a pilot, a single pilot can. Uh, and it's the only large ship that's really super viable to operate on your own. Or at least one of very few. I love the Andromeda. A lot of people love the Andromeda. Kind of like the Cutlass Black, this is quintessential Star Citizen right here. And, yeah, once again. Um, so this is, like I said, this is the big Cutlass Black. So, once you get past this, you can't really effectively operate on your own. You're looking at org ships. and Well, not necessarily org ships, but at least friend ships. <laughs> Punny. Anyway. Um, but... You could do everything you could do in the Cutlass, but more of it, because it's bigger. And, yeah, that's always great. Not sure that, once again, if you're just starting out, don't spend $275 on this game. Unless money just doesn't mean anything to you. Moving on from there, we have the UEE Exploration 2950 pack. Super great pack. A lot of, there's kind of a lot of great value to it, you know, depending on how you look at it, depending on how you don't. Uh, the big thing here is, literally the big thing here is the Carrick, that's the big ship. Uh, they're decommissioned military exploration vessels. They're super cool. Can't do any damage from the pilot seat at all. Literally no weapons, no guns you can fire, no missiles to shoot. Just no pilot damage DPS at all. But you've got like four or five well-positioned massive turrets that do make up for that a bit as long as you've got buddies to fly around with you you also it also comes with the pisces which as i mentioned when we were talking about it earlier is designed to go into the hangar bay that's on the carrick so this would actually ride inside your carrick and you could take it out if you're just taking a little excursion somewhere it also comes with a terrapin which is a medium-sized exploration vessel uh, that needs some love some, from CIG. I'll just leave it at that for now. You can look into it. A lot of people agree with me. This is the MISC Freelancer Dur. So, just like the Freelancer we talked about earlier, except for this is the exploration variant of it. This is one of the more highly recommended versions of the Freelancers, and one of the ones that I could kind of see someone wanting to own, uh over maybe even something like a Cutlass Black, depending on what kind of gameplay you're into and you're looking forward to for the game later, it could make sense. Um, but yeah, this is essentially just a pack dedicated to exploration. Uh, if you're, especially if you're an org that is looking to build uh, a fleet for their exploration, the exploration side of their org, or their, uh, just an, an org fully dedicated to exploration then this would be a super great start for a fleet so uh and if you bought all the ships individually you'd end up paying a lot more than eleven hundred dollars so yeah uh that's all the starter packages and the order in which they come uh, price wise we are going to move on from here this is the part of the video that is will end the relevance for everybody that's watching after the 15th of september 2022 uh so if you guys want to click off i understand i appreciate you for watching to now don't forget to like comment and subscribe and let me know what your what other kind of stuff you're looking for in the future but um for everybody else Go ahead and stick around. We've still got more to talk about. We're going to go over uh, the eight ships that are available for the Free Fly event uh, th through the 15th. All right, so for Ship Showdown 2022, we'll go ahead and click View More here because that will take us to the top eight ships where we can go through them. Because everybody's going to have access to flying these just for sign making an account. You don't need a, ga a game package to access the account. Uh, 
to access the game and you will have access to these eight ships instead of a starter ship. The Redeemer. This thing is super cool. It's got like five turrets on it. They're all massive guns. You and five of your buddies could fly this thing around and just destroy anything in Stanton. People do it a lot. It's super sweet. If you meet up, if you've got buddies that are logging into the game to play during the free fly, or if you meet people along the way, Highly recommend you crew one of these and test it out. It's super cool. This is the Scorpius. Uh, I like the Scorpius even more because it's an X-Wing and I am a huge Star Wars fan. I haven't actually flown it much yet, uh, but it is pretty cool. Um, so it's a two-person heavy fighter. Uh, this turret up here is controlled by the co-pilot. It's a, uh, computer-operated turret rather than an actual manual, manual turret that you would sit inside. And then there's four guns at the tip of each wing that are all pilot-controlled, as well as, I think, like, 12 missiles or something. Uh, it's heavily armored, it's got a lot of acceleration, great maneuverability, and just kind of more gun DPS than any fighter, I think, in the game. Maybe the Hurricane keeps up, but I think it even out DPSs it. It's very, very good. If it's just you and a buddy flying around and y'all want to try and melt everything in the verse, I highly recommend you hop in this and give that a try. Below that, we have the 600i Explorer. This is what everyone calls the Gentleman's Carrick. So, it's an exploration vessel designed by Origin, the same people who make the 100i from the starter packages we were going over earlier. And, uh, it's massive and beautiful and amazing, but instead of having all the awesome usability features that the Carrick has, such as Med Bay that is currently usable and awesome on the Carrick, um... But instead of having a lot of those things, the 600i focuses a lot more on comfort for the guests. This is more of a let's fly to a remote corner of the galaxy and look at how beautiful everything is rather than let's collect a bunch of data and try and find the new place where this civilization is going to live. It's more of a bespoke explorer than a reasoned one. Below that, we have the Carrick, as we were talking about. Uh, Carrick's just probably the most badass ship in the game most people would find. Um, you've got your med bay where you can respawn. It's one of only two ships in the game right now that has that functionality. Uh, you've got five turrets on it that are super... All have great uh, coverage of the ship and large guns, no missiles, but you do have uh, a lot of things that are going to... You've got six or seven uh, beds, crew quarters to rest in so everybody can bed log at the same time. Um, you've got a... Uh, drone bay and that's not usable at the moment but eventually will be for all sorts of different gameplay uh you can fit almost 600 seu of cargo in it and it's just massive uh i could go on and on about this ship but the main thing is um you find yourself with a bunch of a bunch of buddies trying to go around this is your best option and also it's just a beautiful ship you need to check it out while you can uh we love it all right, below the Carrick, the Mercury Star Runner. I love the Mercury Star Runner, but I'm a little mad at it because it took out my boy, the Cutlass Black. And the Cutlass Black is my favorite ship in Star Citizen. But the, Mer the Mercury Star Runner is basically um, the Millennium Falcon. You've got two or three turrets on it. Uh, you're a data runner, so you're in a smuggling ship. So you've got unscannable cargo sections where you can smuggle stuff into. 
and you have a bunch of servers on board where you can store illegal data that you're trying to transport through. It was specifically designed to be able to be a great blockade runner. It's super fast, super limble for a medium-sized ship. You've got a lot more SCU than what you do on a, a Cutlass, and it's just a lot more maneuverable, especially inside of Atmosphere. Super, super great ship. We got the Argo Raft. This is a uh, small cargo hauler. It's actually a medium ship, but it's one of the smaller cargo haulers in the game uh, that's designed specifically for it. Um, and it's one of the first ones that's designed with the new cargo refactor that'll be coming out soon, TM. Uh, there's the first cargo hauler with that designed in mind. Um, not a whole lot to say about it. It fits 96 SCU, kind of like the Andromeda did, um... It's got a couple of turrets on it. Once again, not very much pilot DPS. Uh, but it's like a two-man job with a bunch of... Uh, tractor beams and whatnot on it. Once again, those are not currently usable in-game. You can use a handheld tractor beam, but you can't use uh, ship-mounted tractor beams yet. Not till the cargo refactor. Uh, yeah, it's a two man. If you and a buddy are looking to be space truckers, then this is the ship for you uh, to use during the time you've got access to it. And finally, let's see. Nope. Okay. Well, finally, thankfully, we have two ships from the starter packages earlier. So I won't go into too much detail about them because we already did a little bit. We have the Avenger Titan. So this is a good. This is the one I recommended. This is my favorite starter ship in the game. I think if you're gonna... If you've... If you're willing to spend the money, uh, if it does, if it's not that big of an investment to you and you're willing to spend $70 to see if this is something that you want to be a part of, uh, then this is the way to start. And you've got access to try it for free to see if I'm right, see if you like it. There are people that hate this ship. But... Um, I just feel like you can get a good taste of everything that Star Citizen has to offer in it. And I'll leave that there. Same thing's kind of true about the Pisces. I'm really glad we have it because, as I've said now for the third time in this video, uh, this is the ship specifically designed to fit in the Carex, uh hangar bay. And I'll just leave that at that. So I'm glad we have access to both of them. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. This is TK421 signing out. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and use my referral code when signing up for your RSI account. And I hope to see you in the verse.